How can it be, Matt, that an unrelated adult can step in and be the person to spearhead this seizure of a loving parent couple's child? Like, I, I mean, I don't agree with it, but I can at least picture the nosy aunt interfering. But how can a Minnesota court say some stranger, let's say with the human rights campaign or some GLAD affiliated organization, can step in after receiving a complaint from a child they do not know and effectively wrest custody away from the parents without showing that they're abusive in any way other than they won't affirm this identity or allow these procedures? Yeah, this is a direct attack on parental rights. There's no doubt about it. We have always respected the role of parents, of good mom and dads, to make decisions about their kids, to guide and and whether it's their health care, their mental health, their education, whatever it is. And this Minnesota law says you don't even have to be a parent, just a adult acting in the role of as a parent. That could be anyone, like you said. It could be Planned Parenthood. It could be a profit-motivated gender clinic that says, child, come to Minnesota. We can get emergency jurisdiction and make sure that we're going to get you these drugs and these surgeries and do irreversible damage. And we'll take care of pushing your parents out of the picture, stripping away their custody, stripping away their ability to do it. So now you have this system that, like you said, an unrelated adult, someone at a gender clinic, someone at Planned Parenthood can misuse this law to insert themselves in the role of parent and strip away the ability of parents to safeguard their kids from this harmful gender ideology. Uh, As I read the law, Bob, in Minnesota, Medicaid does have to cover these types of procedures uh, for youth and others. And so it's also something that the taxpayers could potentially have to pay for if the child doesn't have the funds or if Planned Parenthood doesn't want to do it gratis because they do do some of this, uh, at least the medicine doling out. Yeah, well, that's that's part of the whole picture. When you take this scenario and plop it in the middle of uh, a, a neglected or abused child's uh, situation, you can you can certainly imagine if some kid was being trafficked, and and uh, you know their parents are nowhere to be found, and some you know good Samaritan uh, tries to bring the, the kid in and get help. Uh, that, that that scenario, you could see, well, we shouldn't have to have the parents to help this kid, you know, um, you know, and may, meet the child's basic needs and keep it, keep the child safe. But when you take this is unprecedented that that to say that define this type of situation as abuse or neglect, it's putting all of the mechanisms around it that are normally only warranted where a child's uh, at risk of harm. South Dakota would say you're the one, you are the abuser, state of Minnesota, mm-hmm. by doing. Because, you know they've outlawed these things, so I mean yeah. it's it's putting it's putting Minnesota at a at a a very hostile uh, position with so other what, states. What, what happened, Bob? Because you, I, I, this came down. This was passed narrowly on a party line vote, and then signed into law over, you know, a very sharply divided, even in Minnesota, which is a blue state, um, yep. by Governor Tim Walz. But so you were going to testify, you're a lifelong family attorney, and from what I understand, not some dyed-in-the-wool conservative, um, you were going to testify uh, against this law. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I do a lot of neutral work in this area, uh, and I've been doing juvenile court cases, adoption, contested adoptions, um, you know, this is not this is not a party issue, uh, but I I came down when I I mean I was some some people alerted me to this and they said they're going to try to pass this legislation. Would you come down and just talk about what you know? And you know I'd looked into the Swedish study that was done. I'd looked into the the background, the homework, the facts, and just this was just the policy behind this was insane. I was like I'm going to go down there and talk to these uh, the judiciary committee. Uh, about you know what are the facts behind behind this whole issue? You guys need to have that on the table. And I went down and and um, you know I sat there and you know uh, the the committee which was controlled by Democrats refused to allow anyone to testify, including me, uh, that were you know from the general public. They had the author of the bill and a doctor who was in a position to to benefit from this bill. Were the only ones allowed to speak in the committee. 
And uh, I, I made the trip down to St. Paul for nothing, apparently, that day. It was, um, but that's a kind of controlled. Now, if this issue got before a judge, um, the judge certainly wouldn't say, well, I'm only going to hear from people on one side. And so mm-hmm. what's happening down at the St. Paul legislature in Minnesota is that the, that any kind of notion of due process or full review of issues is being shut down. And that ought to, that, that ought to concern everyone in Minnesota. We, we, we don't have a, a good process for, for discussing these, these issues at the Capitol. And Even this when is it comes the to result children. Is. And their, yeah. and their well-being. And Governor Walz is just fine with that. He signed right off on it. Let's yep. just spend a minute on the person who sponsored the bill, Representative Lee Finke, who is a Democratic Farmer Labor Party. That's how uh, Lee is described. 42 years old. Lee is the first openly transgender member of the Minnesota legislature. Lee is quite clearly a man posing as a woman. And Lee... Is, and there you can see Governor Walls right behind Lee. Lee is responsible for a lot of the radical legislation that's getting pushed through in Minnesota. This one in particular, Bob, um, I don't know whether Lee has any biological children of his own, but Lee has effectively managed to endanger everyone else's thanks to pushing this through. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I don't know much about Lee personally, other than what you just went through, but um, why why this person is being given so much power by the administration is is mind boggling. Um, right, the influence there is just un. I mean, what's going on? I, people in Minnesota ought to be just freaking out over this, and it takes a lot to get Minnesotans freaked out because they're pretty passive aggressive, as many know, <laughs> but. But this, if, if this doesn't wake him up, I don't know what would. I, I'm. Do, do they I not hope- know, Bob? Do you think they don't know? You know, do you think they believe? Because right now, Many I don't. said this a, a couple of months ago on my show, and all these people tried to fact check me saying, this is not true, it's not true, it's not true. So then they believe it's not true. But it's true. It is true. And Governor Walsh, yeah. go ahead and sue me. If it's not true, sue me. Sue me for defamation, well, for defaming you here openly. Let's have that litigation. It's true. And so he can't. But go ahead, Bob. Do they not yeah. know? Well, and I've I've been I was threatened on the Senate floor. I mean, not by name, but one of the sen- one of the senators sponsoring the bill said this attorney ought to be reported to the bars. And I said I said in my mind, please do, please do. Let's get that discussion in the news. Something it has to get out in the open, because these private, you know, empty threats are are uh, ridiculous. I mean, they know that what I'm saying is true. I mean, it, it's absolutely rock solid. I'm not partisan. I am. I am for. I care about kids. My whole career has been around family law, and uh, you know, trying to make things better for kids. And I, I this is this is about kids' own welfare and their and their well being. And uh, they they they've, ahead, they've, they've politicized this thing like crazy. Yeah. Well, I I think to that point. A lot of parents are shocked when they hear about this. It's one of the things we hear all the time when parents call us. And we've had a a case in Michigan and and Colorado and other places where these schools are transitioning kids and they're hiding it from parents. And these parents call us and they're shocked because in their mind, they're thinking, surely the government's not going to take away my kid. They're not going to interfere. They're going to let me know if my child is struggling with gender confusion. In fact, when, when you talk to parents, left, right, whatever they are on the political aisle, they agree that they ought to be the first call when this is happening. So I think there is a sense of, of parents of like disbelief that Minnesota would do something like this, that they would actually say, you are an unfit parent. We're going to strip away custody of you if you don't immediately put your kids on these dangerous puberty blockers and hormones. So I think conversations like this where we let parents know this is happening no matter where you are in the country. This isn't just a California or a Massachusetts issue. It's happening in Minnesota It's happening all over the country where these policies and these laws are being pushed that undermine parental rights, that push kids down these one-way streets towards gender identity. And with the message parents need to know is be on the lookout. Don't assume that, you know, your school that you love has your best interest because quite often we're seeing they're adopting policies and they're pushing this stuff on kids and sometimes even intentionally hiding it from parents. For example, I mentioned, mentioned the Michigan case. The family there, this had been happening for months that the school was changing their records, changing documents before they sent them home to the mom and dad to erase the fact that the school was treating the, the daughter as a young boy. 
And it wasn't until a slip up happened and a, a document came home and the, the teacher forgot to catch it and make the correction that the parents found out that this had been happening for months. This is the type of deception that's happening. It's the type of actions by the government that are undermining parental rights. And what we're seeing in Minnesota is it being taken to a whole new level. We're now the full force of state law and power to judges to take away parental rights is being pushed there. Uh, and it ought to be a real wake up call for families across the state and across the country. Once you allow social transition, which these schools are doing in so many states without the parents' knowledge or consent, that child almost always pursues the rest because it's very difficult to reverse once you've come out and said, oh, I'm a different gender and I'm dressing like that different gender and acting and changing my name. It's very hard for these kids to then say, I made a mistake and go back on it. Before you know it, these so-called uh, harmless puberty blockers are given, which cause all sorts of potential health risks to the brain, to the body, to the bones, and then it straight into cross-sex hormones. And sure enough, your odds of becoming completely sterile are through the roof. And your odds of ever having sexual pleasure, as I said in that clip, are, I mean, all but predetermined. And I received this information in the first instance from trans activists who are on tape being honest about this in talking about the risk before people they don't think will criticize them. But it's verified. I mean, that, that it's not even a controversial thing to say. They, they, they will admit that on the other side. And so, Matt, they, they take these kids who are having the normal growing pains that we all went through, and they fast-track them into these radical drugs and then surgeries all outside the care of their parents. That's well, that's what Wall's blessed, which is why I was angry in that particular clip at Taylor Swift. It's not her fault, but I, I actually think Taylor Swift probably had no idea that she just blessed this regime the three of us have just discussed. Yeah, you know, I would encourage her, sit down with the detransitioners. Sit down with people like Chloe Cole or Prisha Mosley that went through this, that had the doctors pushing them to take the hormones, that had the doctors pushing them to have their breasts removed and sit down and hear their stories where they said, I just wish someone had said, wait a second, it's okay that you don't feel comfortable in your body, but that doesn't mean you need to take these hormones. That doesn't mean you need to undergo these surgeries. Because when you hear those stories and you see how these kids were manipulated and pushed towards this, you would stand out and speak out against any law like what passed in Minnesota. You would say, we don't want to judge stepping in, taking custody away from parents and putting a child on these irreversible surgeries and drugs that can do lifelong damage to them. Because as you said, Megan, once that damage is done, it can't be undone. And we're ending up with more and more stories of detransitioners speaking out and just saying, I wish someone, an adult in the room would have just said, wait a second, pause, let's think through this. And what Walls is doing in Minnesota with this law is fast tracking those kids and now putting the full weight of Minnesota law and courts behind them. Imagine you now have a judge saying, yes, young girl, we're going to get you this surgery. We're going to get you these hormones and how difficult it is for that child to step back from that. Did you know that there is nearly $1 trillion of infrastructure and pandemic funds yet to be spent? That's right. There's a massive amount of money that this lame duck administration is pushing hard to spend in their last few months. If the president is able to push these funds out, we could see another prolonged inflation surge, just like we did during COVID. But there's hope. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group can be an inflation hedge for your savings in uncertain times. To see how to protect your IRA or 401k, get your free info kit on gold by texting MK to 989898. Birch Gold makes it seamless to roll over your retirement account while preserving your tax-advantaged status. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to potentially tank the dollar further. Protect your financial future right now. Text MK to the number 989898 for your free info kit from Birch Gold. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.